God, it's perfect. Brian and Patrick don't look like your typical beer brewers. Their idea was first brewed inside this rented space in San Francisco's Soma District. We like to think we're beer entrepreneurs. There aren't many garage startup breweries. Brewing has everything, you know, it's got engineering, creativity, um, it's a social lubricant, obviously. It's like being a mad scientist and being able to drink your experiment. We started about two years ago uh, making these kind of off-the-wall experimental beers in a garage and asking people to come and try them. Without having your own space where you can really make a mess, make mistakes, injure yourself, invite people to come either taste your beer or experiment with whatever product you're making, you need to have a dedicated space. You need to have a way of creating and building like a space to do that. Pack Brew Lab was founded on the principle of making audacious and unique beers. Brian and Patrick weren't only passionate about brewing, they wanted to push the envelope on what could be done to the flavors and style of beer. So this is our Nautilus, which is, which is our hibiscus saison. So we use hibiscus flowers, coriander, and bitter orange peel, so it's this really light, refreshing. Before dipping his hands into ingredients like hibiscus, grain, and barley, Brian studied wine chemistry in Sonoma, decoded genetics in Iceland, and was a researcher at UCSF. I'd been home brewing since college. Most hobbies, you know, come and go, but home brewing just kind of stuck with me for so long that I realized that I could really do this for the long haul. And uh, I finally quit my job and uh, doing this full time. When Brian started a beer company, it, it sort of started gradually. It was not something that was unexpected. Patrick was a lobbyist in D.C. before leaving to help start a solar company in San Francisco Bay. They met in a garage. Brian's first brewery. Patrick went for a tasting and stayed. So they're now looking at us for new techniques. There's a new thing happening in pubs and bars across the country. From city to city, people are passing up the big name brews for something a little closer to home. In the past five years, here at least, I've seen a big shift from large brewers to more local breweries. And also consumers giving the local guys a chance and getting excited about what's coming. People like to see a face for the product. They want to know who's making what they're drinking. And that's something Budweiser can't do. I don't imagine it's easy starting your own business. I know it's not easy starting your own business. All right, here we go. It's probably really difficult to be in such a crowded market. But if you have passion, or whatever you do, it usually shows, and, it, and consumers usually react very positively to that. I really like the names. I like Squid Ink and Nautilus. I thought the descriptions of the beer sounded really interesting. It just kind of sounded like, I don't know, it sounded tasty. So I thought it'd be fun to bring my boyfriend here. He really likes beer and kind of try out some new things. <laughs> It's not like you know other businesses where it's very competitive and you know each business is, is trying to stomp out the other one. I think breweries are trying to help each other make better beer. Having come a long way from serving their neighbors in that garage, Pack Brew Lab's beers are now brewed in a contracted facility and available in over 20 of the Bay Area's most popular restaurants, bars, and beer stores. They're a fixture at local beer festivals and even teach what they've learned. You're meant to have like four or five of these. So we just started the first in our series of homebrew classes and Patrick and Brian from Pack Brew Labs just seemed like a natural choice to sort of start off the series with an intro to homebrewing. There's something that needs to be satisfied in terms of doing your own thing and being your own decision maker. You have to have this drive to be adventuresome and willing to risk that in exchange for the safety of something predictable. I think at the end of the day we measure success on can we sustain this business, can we have a great time, and can we give a unique, audacious product to, to a consumer that is really going to like it. And if more people are liking it, then I think we're pretty successful. And that makes Brian and I happy. Seeing people satisfied with something that we've made makes us happy.